So hello, everybody. It is me, Demetra K, and I am sitting here with Donovan, the recovering Democrat Sadiq. Again, now he is the Black Yule Brenner. Uh, like I said, this guy's name changes every day. Uh, who knows? Maybe he'll surprise us and, and, and have a different name one day. But anyway, uh, the purpose of the Demetra K Show is to promote Black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the Black community to make us an even better people with the emphasis on even. Because we are great people, we can always strive to do better. Uh, I like to say right off the top that we are not live. We are recorded. Donovan and I like to do a podcast on Tuesday and then come back on Tuesday evening and do a live, um, I guess, chat or whatever it is with you all. Uh, just so we can kind of uh, bounce some uh, ideas and arguments or whatever <laughs> um, off of each other. So we're actually going to have a pretty jam-packed show today. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, relationship stuff and um some, I guess, about parenting, if you will. Uh, so, Donovan, what say you before we get started? And I'm sorry if I'm a little bit lagging, but it should catch up. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. Please do us a favor. Hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And also, if you see the scrolling banner there and you want to donate, please, please donate to keep Demetra and I uh, motivated to do these videos and give you something to think about other than the drama and the experience and the stress you have of just living and making a living here in, in the United States. Uh, we have some great topics coming up. Uh, you know, if you guys got an opinion about it, hey, do us a favor in the comments. You know, tell us how you feel about it. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, let's get in, involved in the chat. We Again, we are not live. But again, we love to hear from you guys and, and get your opinion because this is one of the few shows on the Internet where you actually are the co-host. So, Demetra, let's get into it. All right. So I think I, I wanted to start off with something else, but I'm going to start off with this. So last week, y'all might remember we uh, covered... A uh, topic about a $35,000 ring, right? And uh, the interviewer on the street went up to this couple and asked them, you know, they asked, basically asking questions about uh, somehow the ring came up. He said it was $35,000. And then the interviewer asked her, well, what do you do for him? Like, or basically, what do you do to deserve that? And of course, that was a big old conversation. And the guy pretty much said, L allow me uh, to answer for her. And then he listed all these attributes of her and this, that, and the other. Uh, and so this particular uh, video I'm going to show you uh, actually is a little bit differently, but I'll let you guys uh, uh, take a look at it. So here we go. Hopefully it, it works because I see I'm kind of dragging and lagging here. Okay, here we go. Cost? Mm. No, she don't care about like. I'm, that yeah, price. I'm not materialistic in prices. So. She's really more so a thoughtful girl. Like, like it's a thought. Down there. Fifteen hundred dollar ring would be just fine with yeah. you. No. <laughs> don't say no. Don't show up. Don't say no. <laughs> Because when, when did anybody ever propose to you? Nobody proposed to me yet. Exactly. So why would a fifteen hundred dollar ring mean anything? That's a good question. Exactly. But that's what I expect. No, that's what you expect, and it's because you're too picky. Okay. Guess I'm too picky then. Yes, I know you're too picky. <laughs> Seems like you guys love each other very much. Yeah, I love you yes. guys so much. Like. We <laughs> through, like a ring right. doesn't matter. A oh, ring okay. doesn't matter. Yeah, it don't matter. It, just, it matters in a certain aspect, yeah. but it symbolizes like our is materialistic. Okay. So, I y'all saw it there. Of course, that was in you know juxtaposition, if you will, to the video that we saw last week, um, and. I looked into the comments and of course, you know, there was a lot of conversation in regards to how he sees her. Um, and of course, you know, how uh, black women are expected to just kind of, oh, well, you know, it doesn't matter type of thing. Uh, Cause when he said, uh, uh, he asked her, was she, somebody asked her, would she be all right with a $1,500 ring? And she says, no. <laughs> So I'm assuming that indicates that she, you know, would want one that costs a little bit more. And then, of course, he says, uh, 
you know, she's too picky. And then she goes, oh, well, I guess I'm too picky. <laughs> um, so I don't even want to really try to deduce this down to race. Because I'm not quite convinced that it is a race thing. Even though some of the, the comments I saw was kind of geared toward race. Because the last couple from uh, last week. I, I, they weren't white, but they were from overseas because they had like an accent or something like that. Of course, this couple is uh, black. So I saw a lot of conversation regarding, oh, you know, uh, he's broke. Uh, this is how black men, you know, uh, uh, treat women and, you know, that kind of stuff. But I'm not terribly convinced at all that it's a race thing. So Donovan, uh, from what you could tell, what what's your opinion? Delusional woman. The end. Uh, you said delusional woman, the end? The end. Delusional woman, the end. Well, so Donovan's saying that she's delusional. Um, I don't know if I would say that she's delusional necessarily simply because um, I think if, you know, She's not happy with a fifteen hundred dollar ring. I don't. I don't have a problem with her uh, saying that she's not happy with that, or you know, eluding that she would want one uh, that cost a little more. I mean, I've actually seen some nice engagement rings that uh, were about thousand dollars or so, um, and I've seen some really nice engagement rings that cost um, a lot more than that. Um, I don't know. I just I, for me. I'm not terribly convinced that a engagement ring denotes worth or how you feel about someone. Because as I said, I have a friend who spent about uh, $15,000, give or take, for a ring for his fiance back in the day. Um, and they didn't end up getting married. And he says, you know what? I pulled out of the engagement. I'm going to let her keep it. <laughs> you know? And... I asked him, I said, what made you decide to buy such a ring? Like, that's an, quite a ring. He says, well, I love her. And, you know, and I, his girlfriend or fiance at the time, she liked nice things. She was more high end, if you will. In fact, he says, she's the one that taught me to uh, like the nicer things in life. He says, because when we would go out to dinner or the movies or something, he says, I would always show up in like some Jordans a t-shirt and some shorts or whatever, like gym clothes. And uh, she, he said when they really first uh, seriously started to date, she was like, oh, uh -uh. no, you can't go out with me like that. This is cool. Like if we're really just kind of hanging out around the house or whatever. And he says that they didn't go to the movies. She took him to the mall and bought him some hard bottom shoes, some slacks, you know, button up shirts and, you know, some smell good and he says, I attribute, and he likes nice things, trust me, but I attribute her teaching me those things about um, just investing in myself and all those things. So he says, you know, I feel like she's worth that. And I, I don't think she would like me giving her uh, a, a cheaper ring because she liked nice things. And so uh, some people could say it's how you see, feel about the other person or it could be this is all I have. Um, I love you. Uh, I want to uh, make a covenant with you. And uh, the starting with that is giving you this ring. Now, I've also seen people, and I'm just talking, Donna, because you didn't really have an opinion on you. You know, you said period at the end. Um, I I've seen people, once they get married, they get something nicer. Perhaps they are now doing better. They they've got more money coming in or something like that. And so, I think the real question becomes, are, are you more interested in the ring or are you more interested in the union? Because it's often been said, people spend more time preparing for the wedding than they do the marriage. So the wedding, you know, we hear people spending copious amount of money, 20, 30, 40, 50 plus thousands of dollars on a wedding. And then, you know, people come and give them all these gifts and furnish the house and some people even get a house and then a couple of years later they're like um we have to tell y'all something we ain't gonna make it but yet when the wedding dissolves they're still on the hook because most people ain't got 30 40 50 thousand dollars just lying around they go and get loans and 
you know, all this other stuff. So it's like, are we putting more importance on the ring than we are the union? That That's where I'm going. That's why I said I can't really be convinced that it's a race thing. Because my friend is black and he spent quite a bit of money on his, at the time, fiance's ring. I'll agree with you. Like I said, I'm going to elaborate a little bit when I say delusional period. And like you said, it's not necessarily a race thing. It's an economic thing. It's an economic race thing. Okay. Economics. If you're dealing with a man that comes from the neighborhood that you come from, and I'm not saying because you come from a meager start that you won't make millions of dollars. We have thousands of stories of people who come from the gutter and they go to the top. It just happens in that. But notice when they're at the gutter and they're at the gutter level, their significant other, whatever, isn't asking for $15,000 because they're not making that type of money. Usually the big payoff is when they do make it. You stick it out with that person when they do make it and it makes it better. Uh, I remember back in the day and I know, you know, we're, we're generation Xers and all that other stuff, but it, I think it still holds true today. You could, um, a good example, like, like your sister. I could meet your sister in high school. We could date, date, date. We, you know, we're, we're coming from the same economic sphere, right? Hey, baby, I ain't got it right now, but if you stick with me, whatever, we're going to have that big, you know, you dream, you're going to have the big house on here. I don't think any man wants to give his wife or his future wife a Cracker Jack ring. That isn't his goal. He wants his wife happy and all that other stuff, right? But to say, I need 15, you know, a $15,000 ring or a $30,000 ring, like right now, and you know, that man making about $40,000, that's where I come in with a delusion. It's like, you got to be realistic in where you're at right now. If you got it, you got it, okay? But if you don't got it, you don't got it. And unfortunately, in our society, a lot of people watch a lot of TV, which is not real. Like you say, Demetra, the internet is not real. So when I say delusion, this is what I mean by delusion. I'm not meaning meaning it to be disparaging or anything like that, but it's like they people, men and women, let me reemphasize that, men and women dream of living like these big stars and they, they work toward it, whatever, but they're, they don't have it now. And that's one of the biggest problems. We live beyond our means now and we act like, oh yeah, I got the Mercedes. I got the motorcycle. I've got the house. I've got this. No, what you got is debt. That's what you got right now. Some people might have it. I don't know. But what I'm saying is if, if I met a woman at my plane, wherever I'm at, she should, he or she should be uh, smart enough to say, hey, where you're at to put you in debt over, you know, $35,000, a house payment or a car payment on your hand, when you could use that money to pay off your student loans or do something, you know, more realistic, that's where you should go. Because the ring, it's just a symbol. It's not the relationship, like, like, like you said. Uh, I, I know friends that spent Better yet, forget the friends. I, I, I'll fess up. I spent almost back in the day when I uh, got married for the first time, I think I spent like $45,000 on my wedding. And I cut corners everywhere I could. And I, had, I got married in Montgomery, Alabama at Maxwell Air Force Base. The marriage lasted two years. Not including the five, $6,000 ring, that got it. Now, fellas, when you give a ring like that, that's a gift. You could you could write that off. Don't even ask about, you know, getting that back unless she wants to give it to you. And it didn't even last two years. And I was still on the hook for the bill. See, that's what I'm saying. We do these elaborate things. And like you said, we, 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 we like the ceremony. And a lot of young people, women, they see the basketball, why, whatever. And they like that big dream thing. And it's great. But then when the bills start coming in and the reality hits, Oh, wow. We can't afford this. Oh, my God. Why are you working overtime? You work too much. Oh, why are you doing it? You know, oh, I'm, we're working, working. We're not going anywhere. I want to go on vacations. But you got to pay off the bill from the wedding. It took me over a year to pay off. And, and the wedding fell on me. It fell on me. The bills fell on me. It took me a year to pay off a wedding and my marriage didn't last two years. So that's what I mean by delusion. Um, like you said, I agree. People are not preparing for the relationship more so than the ceremony. The ceremony looks great, but what is the number one factor when people break up? In most cases, finances. Yeah. And, you know, um, 
and, and just kind of take it a step further in, in regards to delusion. I, I wouldn't say that she's delusional. And I think I said that. I don't think she's delusional. I just think she, you know, it was like, I, no, I would rather I have something a little bit more than $1,500. Uh, Cause I don't have a problem with a person speaking their truth. Uh, but I would say one of the problems that I did have with uh, that interaction that they had is when he says, you know, she's too, you know, you're, you're, she's too picky. And she goes, well, I guess I'm too picky. He goes, yeah, you are. And, you know, she kind of just like was like, oh, OK, well, I guess I am. And it's like, well, are you too picky or are you too picky because he said you're too picky? And are you saying that because why why are you saying that you know because you you didn't have a problem with saying that you wanted a ring that cost more a second ago but then when he told you that you were too picky so that concerns me that she acquiesced his uh and i'm gonna say it and again i i just feel like i have to preface stuff lately because people be getting in their feelings it has nothing to do with him being a black man i think it has a lot to do with uh the way he sees himself because the one thing i never want to do is talk somebody out of something they want or how they feel about themselves or something like that. So like, for example, if I were him and I heard her say, well, no, I would rather have, you know, a ring that costs more. And, and then for, he also said, well, has it now, did anybody propose to you? She says, no. So nobody's proposed to you. So basically he's basically saying, I didn't even propose to you, you know, whatever, which I was like, ouch. Um, but had he, let's say he did give her a $1,500 ring or he was going to or whatever. And he heard her say that I would say, hey, you know what, honey? Um, I, I, and I want you to have a ring that costs more than $1,500. But right now, what's more important to me is making you an honest woman. Even if it means putting a ring, that's not what you want. And, and honestly, it's not what I want. I want to give you the hope diamond if I could. But what's more important to me is that we form a union and then we, you know, grow together. And then when things are better, not if, but when things are better, then I'm going to get you a nice ring or, you know, upgrade because people do that, uh, you know, upgrade or whatever. But to hear him talk her down and she just kind of like, oh, OK, that concerns me. It, it concerns me because it's like. I want everybody, whether you're a man or you're a woman, I want you to know your worth. I don't ever want, because I'm speaking from experience. I don't ever want anybody to say, well, by all means, I, 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 I you know, I don't want to make him or her mad. So I'm going to just say, oh, okay. Even if that's not what you want, because if you're finding yourself in a situation where you're always kind of talking yourself out of stuff to uh, uh, appease somebody else, that might not be your guy that might not be your woman because your man or your woman is going to say i want that for you however i can't get it for you right now i'm gonna try my best you think about somebody like far kind of mother khadijah we tell the story a lot when he brought home a dirty mattress that was used and she said i'm not sleeping on that and he says oh yes you will <laughs> i'm not going out there and get no brand new mattress because first of all, we can't afford one. So he was like, oh, okay. Now, of course, he let her know that when we do better, we're going to get better. And obviously, the rest is history. But you just got to, I don't know, you, you have to, I guess what I'm saying is, yes, know your limits, but don't limit yourself. Does that make sense? Know your limitations, but don't make that the limit. Cause I don't, I, 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 I always tell y'all about my daughter. I never raised her with limitations. And whenever I see somebody like my niece and nephews, uh, they got the baby trying to raise their children with limit, limitations. I'm like, don't do that to them. Figure out a way to tell them that maybe not right now, but some other time or whatever. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. But I, I think the problem is when, when we tell people know their worth. The problem is they take it out of context. And, and, and this is just my opinion on it because I have nieces and things like that. And they talk about their worth. They confuse their worth with what they wish for or what they want. You hear a lot of women say, I want a six figure guy. I want this. I want, you know, they can, they're, they're confusing their worth. I agree with you. You should know what it is. Um, 
what your worth is. You know what I mean? Now, l- let me give you this example real quick. If you are a Sukiyana, okay, and you're out there in the streets and, you know, making yourself look bad and really, you know, in the gutter like that, what is your worth? As perceived by the public, as perceived by yourself, you're going to attract what kind, what type of guys? You see, do you see what I'm saying? The, 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 you know, the, the, the way it is, you got a lot of women here that say, oh, well, I got to know my worth. But even if that guy's a plumber, I know you want a basketball player. You think you deserve a basketball player, but that isn't, that, that isn't, that's a want. That's not necessarily where you're at level wise. Now, I, you know, a lot of people might not agree with me. I don't know if I'm saying it in the right context, but I'm finding and what I'm seeing is a lot of people, men and women, it's like men. We, we call men delusional when they either think you talk to a young man, he says, I'm going to be a rapper or I'm going to be a star athlete. The chances of being a star athlete is less than 1%, right? Astronomical. I'm not saying you can't do it. It's astronomical, the work you're going to have to put in to do it. But striving to be that Al Bundy type, type person, all men want to be professional athletes and these great heroes. It's a want. It's not a need. And yeah, we know our worth, but see, my worth is, is, is where I'm at right now. I'm not a million dollar type person. I'm not. I can be, but I'm not. I'm not at that level now. I'm not a million dollar type person. And I, I think a lot of young people, they confuse wants with what they want and what they dream about with what their worth is. And that's, it, it's to me, that's where the confusion comes into. So when I hear somebody say my self-worth, I, I, I directly attribute that to knowledge of self, right? Knowledge of self means so many things, but knowing yourself and who you are and what you are and all of that, now I'm going to say this, my worth is my worth. And when I say my worth is my worth, it's not for somebody else to come along and to deduce what I am worth, right? And Whatever you feel that you're worth, I don't have a problem with anybody going after that and going to seek that. Even with somebody like Sukahana, Sukahana, yes, yeah, she's a gutter chick and a behavior that she exudes. But I guarantee you, she knows her worth in that, you know, she probably aspires to do certain things and have certain things or whatever because her worth. Now, I don't know Sukahana, but what I see, I've seen of her. I don't see her messing with no broke men or nothing like that because she always says he needs to have some money, blah, 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 woo, woo, woo. So that's what she feels like she's worth, regardless of what I see in Sukahana. You know, I might say, well, her behavior is kind of lackluster, but that still doesn't denote how she feels about herself. And so we cannot deduce somebody else's self where we can only really worry about ourselves. But as I said, if your self-worth says that I um, I am worthy of this, because a lot of times too, and I agree with you that a lot of times people think self-worth is connected to material things. It, it, it is kind of sort of, but your self-worth is worth actually, it's, it's actually priceless because a lot of times we allow people to discount us or we discount ourselves for another person, like I felt like that um, young woman did for him when he says, oh, you're too picky. And she goes, well, I guess I'm too picky. She you know, allowed him to discount what she felt she was worthy of. Eat the um, cake, Annie Mae. Eat the cake. Yeah, well, you know, and whatever, you know, so it's like my self-worth is my self-worth. Now, if I'm telling you, if, if my self-worth is too much for you, then you should probably go with somebody else whose self-worth is not like mine. For whatever you find that you don't like about it. But as humans, we have to get really laser focused about what our self-worth is and how much are we willing to deviate from that. You know what I'm saying? Now, I, I, I'm 52 years old, okay? 52 years old, and I spent a lot of time in my life putting 52 myself- 52 or 72? Baby, you know I'm 52. Okay? <laughs> Look, 32. Hello. Um, but so I spent a lot of time of my life uh, discounting my self worth 
not even because I always tell y'all this. I've you know had a few relationships, but I never totally blame any of them. I don't I'm not not one to say, oh, I it was all their fault, even though I've never done anything, you know, like uh adverse to those people, but because I take some some fault in it one way or the other, but I've spent a lot of time discounting myself, uh, not just for other people, but for myself, where I didn't have proper knowledge of self to say, hey, wait a minute now, you deserve better because your self-worth is actually here, but you keep lowering your, your, your self-worth here. Figure out a way here and here to come up to where your self-worth actually is. And as humans, man or woman, we got to get used to saying, man, you look good. You smell good. You know, you, you know how to blow a sister back out and all of that. But I'm compromising my self-worth by being with you because you don't value how I feel about myself. Because telling somebody that they're too picky because they want a ring that's more than $1,500 is him telling her, I don't see the value in you that you see in yourself. To me, that's more problematic than the cost of any ring on this planet. Yeah, what he should have said was, yes, baby, but you know, you are worth that. But right now we can't afford that or something like of that nature, like down the road. Cause like I said, I've seen a lot of people, our grandparents, our parents. Yeah, they didn't have it coming out of the gutter. But now look at these baby boomers now that are retiring, that got the money, they're traveling, they're doing that. The ones that have been together for 40, 50 years, they're living the life. They got the big house, you know, they stuck it out together. They went through uphill, downhill, uphill, downhill, stayed downhill for a while. Then he got got up the hill and, and they're making money hands over fist and, and they're living that life. Unfortunately. During that journey, you're going to you're going to lose your youth, you know, because you're out there working and hard and doing what you got to do. Now you're on the downside of the mountain and you're 70 years old. You might have this ailment, that ailment. Mama ain't got the body that she did when she was 22, you know, whatever. So, yeah, you, you know, the thing that you, you would you would love to have done back then when you were 20. Now you're 70. It's a little different now because, you know, you ain't going to be frolicking on the beach. And you know what I mean? So. You know, it's doable. And I, I've seen older couples that have been together for a long time and they they struggle together. They raise the kids. They did what they got to do. And they finally got there. I th I just think one of the problems is with our with the newer generations that are coming along. Everything is now. And that's not realistic. Everything is now, now, now. Just give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. And that's that's one of the problems that we have in this modern generation of young people, generation X, uh, Y, uh, millennials and stuff, everything is now. And we know as older people, what you want now, if you want it, you're gonna have to work hard for it. Yeah, and so, and, and just closing this segment, uh, I, I don't know the young lady, I'm concerned. Um, he has not proposed to her yet, but you kind of got a Hail Mary there and that uh, if he does propose to you, but something tells me he probably won't, you know, um, if he does propose to you, you might want it unless he changes and re rearranges his understanding of her, of you, young lady. Um, I would suggest you tell him no. You know what? I love you, uh, but I don't think you love me the way I love me. And I don't think you love, you know... It just, I don't know, you know, because I can't spend a lifetime with you trying to convince me uh, of what I feel I'm worthy of, right? Like, I, I don't yeah, know. I know where you're going with that. Real quick, um, immediately when that man said that to her, whatever, she should have known her worth and said, well, you know, and that's what I'm saying. Women that, like you, you say all the time, a lot of people say all the time, when a woman doesn't put a, any demands on a man, he's going to do what he wants to do. How are you going to give a man a baby, but you, but you're not requiring marriage? The minute he said and told her that, she should have said, "Well, I'm out." That's good to know. You know what I mean? Because he's basically telling her, "Hey, you're not on that level where I'm going to do all of that." And I, I wish more young women would vet themselves like that. If you say you're worth all that, act like it, be it, just be it. 
Yeah, and I just think people, uh, men and women, yeah, you just need to know it's okay to walk away from something that's not serving you. You know, we just get used to it because I think that maybe they said they were together four years. I don't know, maybe. But it's like, I, I don't know. I, I just don't see the value in allowing somebody to treat you like a trampoline or, you know, the, uh, vice versa. And they don't have any serious intentions with you. You know what I mean? Like, what are, what are we doing here? What What's your intentions with me? Are you just trying to treat me like a bounce house or what? You know, are we going anywhere with this? Which is why I say, you know, for me, I'm not really in a hurry to engage in a relationship um, unless that man is has made himself uh, 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 clear. I, I see myself getting married and I would love to see if that's if you were the person that I, I would propose to. See, if we're on that page and, you know, we can, you know, explore things further. But as far as, you know, we just having sex first of all um I, this might be a little bit judgmental and i guess, guess i mean for it to be just a little bit I, I think at this age we're too old to be going through all that you know just being just hopping around from bed to bed to bed you know or whatever the case is it's like make a decision you know you, the, 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 in your younger years you, you, you would think you've gotten that out of your system but here you are in your 50s 60s 70s you know still trying to hop from bed to bed like a damn bed bug it's like grow up, you know, grow up by now. Most of us know sex is the easy part. It's the, it's the, it's, the, it's easy. You know, you can, it, it just is. It's, that's the easy part. Getting in bed with somebody, taking, you know, or taking your clothes off and wow, for two minutes. That's the easy part. It is. The hard part is, okay, outside of sex, do I even like you? Like, would I spend the rest of my life with you? Do I want to? Do I feel, do I feel comfortable enough uh, divulging my most inner secrets to you? And whatever, right? Because there's a lot of people who are sleeping with each other. And they're like, they even had a full conversation about nothing. Other than you want it to the left, more to the right. Yeah, too hard. too Like, you know what I'm saying? Leg up, <laughs> leg down, pat, pat. Yeah. <laughs> they ain't had no full conversation with each other. So at this age, we're just too old. And like I said, I know somebody can say, mind your business, you're being judgmental. Yes, I'm being judgmental. We're too old. Can't yes, grow. bring judgmental back to the Black community as well as shame. We need to have older people start speaking up and stop being silent. Yes, be judgmental. Right. All right. So moving right along, if you're still here, good for you. It's going to get even better. Okay. So I saw this. Actually, my daughter showed this to me uh, a couple of days ago. And um, I actually I, I forgot that I even followed this page. It's from Six Brown Chicks. It's been around a long time. And if I'm not mistaken, well, one of Puff Daddy's, uh, Kim Porter, I think it was, she was actually originally part of the Six Brown Chicks. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, here was the question uh, or statement or whatever that was posed to them. So it says, question six. I left my wife of 23 years for a younger woman who works at the car wash. I tell her about life, show her around, etc. I spend a little money on her, not too much. I noticed she had my number saved under wisdom on her phone. I figured she called me wisdom because I teach her so much about life. My 18-year-old daughter sent me a TikTok video my younger girlfriend made. In the video, she says, I'm so poor, I'm effing an old man who's shaped like a wisdom tooth. And he, he has the audacity to be cheap. Where do I go from here? Confront her? Just move on. I'm hurt and embarrassed. So... This particular gentleman was looking for advice. Donovan, do you want to go first? Let me speak on this. Let me speak on this. All right. She has her answer. She knew the job was dangerous when well, she took it. Asking the he's asking the question. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know that. But, I, but oh. here's the thing. Uh, he and she knew the job was, he knew the job was dangerous when he took it. I mean, come on. I mean, you know, I'm 53 years old myself, even though I know I'm, I look about 22, but um, keep myself in shape and stuff like that. But brothers, like I said, delusion, 
I use this word a lot because it is exactly what is going on. Everybody is in a delusional state about themselves. Brother, she's saying that's how she sees you as a student. Is she lying? The question is, is she lying? I don't know because I haven't seen a picture of you. The point is you knew the job was dangerous when you took it at 53 years old. And I'm going to be real about it. Most of the women that are in my age group, in my age group, they have children, which means they have, you know, you know, you know, they have woman weight. They're not, you know, they're not that, you know, whatever, whatever. I mean, we're at an advanced age. So, I mean, if, you know, I don't know why, why this guy is getting upset about that because what did what do you think that this young girl looks at you as other than a sugar daddy? I mean, you know, the delusion goes all around. I, I just don't, I, I don't know. I have friends that date younger women. I date younger women myself. And it's obvious when I date younger women, it's a transactional relationship. It literally is, it's transactional. And, um, and that's fine. But I'm not going to sit there and delude myself and think that, oh, yeah, this girl looks at me like I'm this, you know, 25 year old basketball player that I used to be and all this other stuff. She's looking at me to uh, and you're talking about girls that are in the modern age now. Uh, they want to get their hair done. They want to get their nails done. They, I mean, these people spend a lot of money, cell, cell phones, you know, so on, so on, so forth. It costs a lot of money for these young women to maintain themselves and all that other stuff. So for him to sit there and think that you met her at a car wash, dude. You met her at a car wash. Not saying that that's a bad situation, but come on, delusion at its finest. And that's a man. He should be hurt and he should be embarrassed because I'm not saying love doesn't happen. If it, you know, if it blossoms into that, great. But obviously if she's putting out videos like that, you know, whatever, and, and making you look bad, you look bad, dog. Yeah, this is this is a loaded question for me uh, because he did say she's. Uh, he, he, but the other thing is, he left his wife, left his wife of twenty three years for a younger woman who worked at a car wash. Okay, that's to me. Is, is problematic in and of itself because it's funny. I was having this conversation with a friend of mine the other day, right? And it's 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 a, it's, it's a lot going on here, but I, I guess I'm gonna circle back to that. I just wanted y'all to realize that he left his wife of 23 years, okay? So he said, I teach her things and show her around. I spend money a little on her, money on her, not too much, which they both verified. He's cheap, okay? And sounds like he's bad body because if you're shaped like a wisdom tooth, he's probably got a fupa or something like that. Yes, men have fupas too. That's also the other delusion is that it's just women, older women that have children. They body ain't all that. But listen, there's a lot of men walking around with fupas and flat booties and sitting on their ball sacks because they drop. I agree. I totally agree. It's sad. It's sad. Yeah. So she's saying that. Ugh. And the other thing that's very telling to me is you know, she says that she's like, did she say she's poor? Basically, like, she's doing a set it off. I'm just having relations with this guy for money, and I don't want to. He turns me off. He's gross. I probably have to shower with scalding hot water and Ajax to get the scent of and the mom. Brillo pad. You don't forget the Brillo pad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all of that, you know. So she's just telling, she's saying how she feels, right? So clearly, this here is a sugar daddy situation, right? And all she says, she says, and he has the audacity to be cheap. And I totally, totally agree with her that he has the audacity to be cheap. Because as I was having this conversation with my other uh, male friend who likes him a little bit younger, younger, okay? How are you a sugar daddy and you cheap? See, you said it's delusion, and I agree, but I think it's more delusion on his behalf because sucker, you all, oh, triple, oh, oh, gee, sucker, you're delusional and thinking that you can take your bad body self and go hop up and down on this very younger woman for next to nothing. You the one that forgot your role. Don't know what no young woman want to be with no old dude got a hole in his donut. 
be, you know, beer belly lapping over his belt, you know, for fun. She ain't, she, listen, that, that, that's probably rarely the case that a younger woman is with a man just because, oh, I just like the way the sun glistens off of your bald spot. And that, what is that you're wearing today? Is it Ben Gay or is it Robitussin? You know, ain't, a, <laughs> ain't no young woman with no man that old for that. She's with them because you, we're going to the mall, uh, you know, oh, you know, sugar daddy, there's this new purse on sale and I really like it. Can you cash out me some money? That is his role. But for him to be upset that she sees him that way, I'm like, how do you as an old man not understand that these young women see you that way? Come on. She wants to be with, you know, Dams and Idris or Michael B. Jordan or somebody. She wait. Ain't fantas- wait, wait. She ain't, she, ain't, she ain't fantasizing about you, you know, uh, Bookman or whatever the case is. She fantasizes about a younger dude. But she's like, the younger dudes probably ain't got the Skrilla. And they don't sound like he got a lot of money because he said not too much. So it's like for, for these old dudes to think that these young women, they're just really into me. No, they're not. They're not into you. As soon as your little social security dries up, they're going to dry up too. They're like, no, uh, shop is closed. It's been real, daddy-o. I'm out of here. So he's saying, where do I go from here? Go back to your wife if she'll have you. Get down on both of your rusty, crusty knees that you probably need a knee replacement for and say, I'm sorry, I was foolish. I do not want to throw this union away. I will do whatever it takes to get this back. Should you confront her? No, you should not confront her because you was the sucker. She licked you and you didn't realize your role in her life. What are you going to confront her? Oh, I'm just so hurt. How could you do this to me? She don't care. She a hot girl. She does that all the time. And should you just move on? It sounds like she already has moved on from you. She's gone to TikTok to tell the world to the fact that it got to back to your 18-year-old daughter that she's making jest of your very geriatric self on the internet. You say, I'm hurt and embarrassed. Why? Why are you hurt and embarrassed? You shouldn't shouldn't be hurt and embarrassed because you need to know your role. And your role is, yes, dear, how much today? Okay, I'm sending a cash app now. That's your role. So you shouldn't be hurt and embarrassed. Well, I I agree with you wholeheartedly in a lot of what you're saying. But let me me speak on this from a man's perspective, okay? All right. Any man that is older like myself, that gets with a younger woman, you automatically know she has a young dude on the, you know, that's her main guy because young women and young people, they congregate among each other. Of course, you should know that. You mean to tell me that this guy is so naive that he thinks that he is just the bee's knees, that women just want him like that? If that was the case, he wouldn't be in a sugar daddy situation, right? He wouldn't even be in that situation. He could just pick what he wants and it's all good to go, right? But then it sounds like to me, This man, because notice he referenced, he gives her wisdom. This guy, and don't get me wrong, wisdom is valuable. You can't really put a price on wisdom. But unfortunately, in reality, these young people, they can Google wisdom. They can Google that all all day long. So your wisdom, if if he's thinking the wisdom that he gives her is worth something in regards, it's worth something to him in his day. But to these younger kids, they can Google wisdom. So his delusion is way out there. I don't know why he should be hurt. He should be looking like at himself as he was a fool because he had in-house uh, nook nook with his wife of all of those years. And I agree with you. He should go and try to get his wife if she will have him back and make amends to what he needs to uh, to do to get back in there. But remember, she's always good. What's that song? And I hate to bring it up by a famous artist that's in jail. It's called When a Woman's Fed Up. She's always gonna look at you with that eye, even if she does take you back. Now, again, I I date younger women, but I don't date these younger women think, oh yeah, I'm gonna get in a relationship with her and it's gonna be, oh, we're gonna get together. No, I no, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not gonna you know assume that. Like you said, it's a transactional relationship. I am there to provide this and to provide that. That is why, as the Black Yule Brenner, great actor, 
What is my favorite movie of all times, Demetra? One of my favorite movies of all times. What's love got to do with it? And you just you just tell her how it's gonna be. And if she doesn't want to get on your program, she doesn't get on your program. But the bottom line is, I'm an older man. So even as an older man, I'm gonna you know get older and maybe get sick, or if I don't take care of myself, even though I'm in great shape, ladies, uh, <laughs> and doing all that other stuff. I mean, the younger woman's gonna move on. Eventually she's gonna move on. You're gonna pass away or whatever. You're gonna go to the old folks home. You think she's gonna sit there and be like, oh my God, I love this man so much. And your ex-wife isn't gonna be there at the funeral. She's not <laughs> gonna be there at the funeral. And you look this young woman. So delusion, delusion, delusion. But I think that he really thought his wisdom was had value. That's what I really think his, his big problem was. Yeah, I mean, an older woman might uh, 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 appreciate wisdom. She don't want no wisdom from you. She barely want any of your wee-wee, let alone some damn wisdom. She like, man, get cut all of that. Okay, the wisdom I'm getting right now is from Megan Thee Stallion, Sukahana, and all them. That's where I get my wisdom from. But you old cooter, I don't need that. Listen, if you, if, you was, if you was wise, then you wouldn't be with me in the first place, especially expecting for me to be into you and ooh, you know, cause I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm a woman, I've never done this, but I know the game. Oh, <laughs> oh you're so cute. Oh, he telling the jokes, why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? And she's probably thinking this is so corny, but she's like, <laughs> oh, that was so funny. Where do you come up with this stuff, you know? So she's playing a role to get what she got to get. And what she wants is some red bottoms, some pirates. She wants some steak, 48. She might want to go to the mall, whatever, right? She want to get her some 43 inches of weave. Well, that's what she wants. And I like, because I like I said, I have a, quite a few uh, male friends, and Donovan, you're one of them, that like the younger woman. And like my one friend, um, I was speaking to, as a matter of fact, yesterday, we had a very long conversation. I said, listen. The problem with you older men is y'all be wanting the younger women because, yeah, they got the tight bodies and all that other stuff. But y'all want those younger women to do what Gloda Dean would do. I said, the young woman ain't going to get up every morning and, and, and make you some breakfast and, and make sure you got something to eat in your clothes and all the She ain't going to finish. She's like, where are we eating? Can we get a door dash something today? That's what the younger women are on. They ain't on. They don't care about you like Glow to Dean, the woman you left a 23 years. And I'm going to say this, and I don't care if you get mad. Don't get that mad at me. Get mad at your mama. A lot of men who leave a good woman or a lot of men who say they want a good woman. You don't want a good woman. Excuse my French. Y'all want good coochie. That's what y'all want. There's a difference between having a good woman and having some good coochie. That's what y'all want. Because there's no way in the world you, you're mistaking a woman in her 20s and you in your 50s. You're not mistaking no woman in her 20s um, as a, as a uh, not that she's a bad person, but a good woman that has a little bit of life experience and knows how to treat a man. So you sugar daddies who sometimes act very sour when it goes down south, Shut your mouth, open your wallet, and get a, a yes, dear, in your vocabulary more often. I agree. Um, but I, I'm going to do defense for myself. It's not that I like younger women. I've been waiting on your sister for 30 years, and I figured if I get hemmed up, then when your sister's ready to come come back, I'll be locked in. See, so I'm just trying to just keep myself a Brits when she's ready. But let me ask you this. Is there such a thing as bad coaching? I don't know about that. I've never experienced anybody else. Yeah, you know, I, I hear that a lot. But the thing is, though, at the end of the day, men are going to get theirs, even if it's, I don't know, you know, what you consider bad coochie, but if it's well, a hole I, and it's warm. Metaphorically, what I'm yeah. saying, this is where I'm going with it, is men often mistake a good woman for just good sex. Good sex, That's right. Okay. You can have great sex with a woman who is not good. Or a woman is not good for you, just like before a woman. A woman can have great sex with a man that's not good for her. In, in fact, that we see that a lot. Ray Ray's in the like, pookies. They love him. Yeah, he, I just can't leave him alone. Like I was telling my friend, he was busting up. He was like, you are crazy. Um, I said, as an older woman, if I was with a younger dude, which I would not be because I'm just not going to be with no younger dude. 
I said, I know that we're going to be together for one thing. That is cracking my back, you know, readjusting the bread, the bed springs and lifting the legs, keeping the legs above. (laughs) Whatever, you know, and then I'm going to get on my landline to my, to, to, uh, you know, Ethel. Girl, let me tell you about this young junior flip. He liked to kill your girl. I told him, I mean, you know, my, my, my body ain't did none of that in the last 20 years, you know, but I'm going to know that though. I'm not trying to say, girl, I just really want to make you, I just can't wait for him to drop down on one knee and, and propose to me. Come on in here. Nah, it, I, I, like, there's a, I know women who are just like, thank you, but you got to go home. <laughs> you know, I, I appreciate it. I thank you for the chiropractic, you know, appointment, crack, crack, crack. But you got to go home. I call you when, you know, I need another adjustment, um, if you will. But I just think that the delusion is in thinking, of course, you know, there's some women out there who like older men just because he doesn't have to have a lot of money. But that's probably a very small amount, you know, so you'd be better off finding a four leaf clover some damn wear at the end of a rainbow with a pot of gold or something. Uh, than to find a, a, a young, a, come on, man, woman in her 20s. What the heck? I, I, I venture to ask Donovan, since you put yourself out there, what, what can a woman in her 20s do for you? Other, uh, other than, you know. Well, you know, again, you know, in the modern age, when you're dealing with young people, they, they know where like uh, different things are that we didn't experience in our age. And it was like, you know, amusement parks or just things that you might be interested in that you never thought of. But outside of that, outside of... Uh, uh, just the aspect of sex, because in general, men do um, appreciate and we value youth in women. We just do. That's why, you know, older women, you guys cling on to to, to your youth. You guys, are, I mean, that's your your Achilles heel. Women, women that when they get older, they they do so much to try to stay and look young, and because we they know women, men, I'm sorry, men we value youth. We just value, you know, young looking women. If you're looking, if you're looking like, let's say you're looking like 60. Okay. Now a good example is, uh, let's say you look like uh, Keith Richards and you're 60 years old, right? Your face is just caved in and whatever the deal is. Come on, men aren't going to be attracted to that. And, And that's one of the reasons why a lot of you women, you guys keep yourselves up, the ones that do keep themselves up, because it does give you a a leverage in the dating market when it comes to men, because men, you know, we naturally rotate to that. And as a woman, let me just go on and dispel a couple of things for you. Yes, there's some women out there who are like, okay, I want to look good for a man, but as myself, I'm going to look good for me. I as, as I rarely even leave the house, but when I do, I'm going to look good and I'm going to look good in this damn house, right? Like right. today, I probably won't go anywhere, but I, I believe it or not, I, I, I smell good because I put on perfume every day. I, you know, make sure that I, I've, I've taken a shower and, and, and I'm, you know, I'm presentable because I never know. Right. So what I'm saying is, yes, that's a small part of it. But don't get y'all don't 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 get your heads blown up too much that women are out here just doing this for y'all. Most of women us are doing this for ourselves, especially at this age, because, yes, youth is fleeting and it's fleeting for y'all, too. And that's the thing. Y'all, and, and, and I like. The delusion is really is strong on both ends, but I think in that aspect, Donovan, it's strong for you men because y'all think that no matter how I look and how I smell, um, that a woman gonna want to be with me. But I, the, but this woman, she's 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 priming herself to look her best for me. That's a small part of it, but nah, women want a man that looks like he takes care of himself. I, I I I see a lot of men who are you know my age or younger, and I'm like, surely you're lying. Surely you're at least sixty or you know or older because you ain't taking care of yourself either. So I I hear sometimes I don't look like I'm fifty two. Whatever I I don't my head doesn't get big or anything like that. I do I hear it a lot. Um, but at the same time, it's like I I don't want to be with no man who look road hard and put away wet. You know, burnt the candle on both ends, and he looked. Ugh! I don't want to be with no man like that. I want, and I, listen, I'm not being. Uh, uh, what am I saying? Shallow and like people don't have wrinkles. People wrinkle. You know, we're getting older, we wrinkle. But I'm saying, as far as somebody who just clearly not taking care of themselves, and I'm gonna tell you one thing about me. 
I have a very uh, sensitive olfactory um, area and smelling, sense of smell. Um, and oftentimes when I'm out, like I was at the mall yesterday, and I cannot tell you how many funky men that I've smelled. And I'm like, is this normal? I mean, especially like out here, I don't know if it's- because In Houston, the humidity and stuff, get used to it, sweetheart. But it's nasty. It's like, and, and it's not even, it, it's, 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 Sometimes it's, it's underarm odor. Sometimes it's like, do you wash? The, it's hair. It's just all of it. And I'm like, what is going on here? And Frito chips. Are you getting uh, that Frito chips, uh, Frito Lay chip and, smell? And I'm not even close to these men like that. It's just if I'm walking by. And so I don't know if I'm just sensitive, but I'm like, y'all don't wash your hair out here. Like, what is going on? It's disgusting. And then the other thing, now I'm going to get myself in trouble. Weed, weed smokers, I don't care, man, woman, uh-uh. Because I know people who smoke weed, and I don't care how much they try to disguise it. It's in your hair. It's in your skin. It's in your nails. It's in your clothes. It's gross. It's in your, it's car. In your car. It's gross. It's nasty. Let me say this. If, if, if you got that smell just by people you're walking in the mall, minding your own business, how do you think a lot of men think about when women have these weaves on? Now, remember when we were in Tokyo and I had my hat and I was sweating because of the humidity and stuff and we we're walking in Disneyland and I was taking my hat off and kind of, you know, airing myself out and stuff like that. Now, I know inside a hat, you know, my sweat glands are in there and the sweat is in there. Right. So I got to wash my hat out every now and then. What do you think men uh, smell when we, you know, you have your weave on, you know, three or uh, two months, you know, we're, we're smelling that stuff. So I, I, I agree I, with I, you. I smell women too. I smell women and yeah. I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going on. Maybe people are just aren't taking baths like they used to. Cause I know Donovan, every time we go on vacation, you got some sh to say you take forever. Why does it take you so long? And I'm not even taking that long in the larger scheme of things. I want to make wait, sure wait, I'm two hours. Wait, wait, everybody. D Demetra's idea of not taking too long, it's about two and a half hours. She takes about 45 minutes to shower and about an hour to do her face and then about an hour to get her clothes on and get her smell good on. So we have to tell Demetra two hours prior to an event to get it's ready. Experience. It's it's, it's you know what it is? Maybe I should get better at it on vacation, like kind of minimizing it. Now, I don't take that long on my face because I don't do a lot to my face, but for me, it's it's self care. It's I'm I'm am caring about myself. I'm doing my like it's just like crack to me. It is. It's like crack getting ready. And my daughter tell you the same thing. She's like, Mom, are you ready? I'm like, I'm getting ready. And that means I, I I'll say, um, I'll be ready in about 15 more minutes. Really means like 30 minutes, 45 minutes more. But I I love it. It's an experience. I love putting you know shea butter on and you know just it's all of that and. Some smell good. I love it. Wasn't there a song by the Divinals? Uh, I touch myself. <laughs> yes. No, that's a good song. I touch myself. Yes. <laughs> that's actually a pretty good song. <laughs> no, but for real, it is a little bit of abusive. But the I, I, I'm just I, I I enjoy being a woman and taking the time that I need to make sure that I um, am living the most feminine experience possible. It's just me. You know, uh, most of the time my nails are painted. It's rare that they're not. Um, red is my color of choice. Y'all know why I like red lipstick and red nails. It was my mom's, you know, color of choice as well. Um, and I've had, uh, I've been with men, you know, and we were just hanging around the house, whatever. And they were like, why are you putting on perfume? Are you going somewhere? I'm like, no, I, I always put on perfume. I don't care where, if I'm staying in the house, I'm going to put on some perfume. If you get something from that, great. If you don't, then I know I smell good. Well, you That's know, why he, I do it. Well, let me add this in. And fellas, I, I don't know what it is about you younger men that you guys don't understand. The sex is not what is, be, sex is sex, but the beautiful sex organ is not what's between your legs. It's what's in your mind. If you want to get into a woman's mind, you got to like get her mind going roses, you know, or something like that. You start her off with that and she's like feeling good about herself, whatever. But let's say you do get lucky and she lets you enter her sexual realm. Right. And you get lucky to do that. 
do you think this woman, after all getting her mind together, then she gets a whiff of you and you got the man sweat on you? Or some women are into that, but I'm in general. Why don't you just go shower up and put some cologne on when you're doing it and see the difference in how your woman reacts in how and how you're doing that because you smell good and she's like, oh my God, this guy smells so good. You know, me, old spice, you never go wrong with old spice. Grandpa, hey, let me tell you something about some old spice. Oh, let me tell you about some old spice. My high school boyfriend, oh, he used to wear some old spice. And I'm like, oh, you, mm, mm, mm. I love some old spice. I really do. It's just, oh my God. It's just, I, and I'm one of those women, like me and my friend Sharon, we would uh, go up the mountain. You know, me and Sharon, we go up the mountain all the time. And whenever a man would walk by and had on some smell good, we would both turn and be like, damn. Sometimes we'll say, what you wearing? What you, you know, because I love that. I love men that smell good. Because to me, and I listen, I'm going to be honest with you too. I can tell when you're going to spray some cologne over some funk. Yeah, I was just going to say that. We're not talking about spraying cologne over funk. We're talking about smelling good. Smelling good. You know what I mean? Like one day I was at the mall and we'll get to our other topics maybe uh, later on in the uh, live series. Uh, I was at the mall with somebody a couple of months ago. And, you know, most people out here, they, I don't know, maybe it's just a regional thing, kind of just really dressed down. But me, I'm not dressed down when I go out, you know. And these two younger brothers, they might have been in like the late 20s and 30s. When I tell you, these brothers came through the mall with some nice slacks, button up shirt, nothing major, and some hard bottom shoes, hair was on point. And I looked, I said, and I see that. I said, that's what I'm talking about. I said, that's how young men and men should be out and about. Like you care, like you got an effort. If you want to be taken seriously, I can take a person dressed like that seriously. As an, as an older woman, I get tired of seeing men my age walking around. It's, like I said, it's cool. You, you, you hanging out, whatever. I get tired of seeing men with the shorts on and, and you know, tube socks and tennis shoes. Because as a woman, I got, I, 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 like, yeah, I got tennis shoes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of turning into a sneaker head per se. I don't know where I got that from later in life, but rest assured, boo boo, if we going out somewhere, I'm not going to wear no tennis shoes. I'm going to have my heels on. I'm going to have on some high heel boots, some heels. I'm going to have on something. Probably going to have on a dress. I don't care where we're going to the movies or whatever. We're going to hang out at the mall. I'm going to get something to eat because that's how I feel good. I feel good dressed. And it's not necessarily for the person I'm with. It's for me. And most of the time when I go out, I always get compliments on, oh, you're very pretty. Oh, I like that. Oh, you look cute. You look nice. And I'm like, well, thank you. So it's, for me, it's become twofold. It's for me. And it's to also show an example to other women like, hey, we don't have to be outside with pajamas and bonnets on, even though we're going to Walmart. When I go to Walmart, I'm, I'm you know, I'm dressed too. We, we, can, we can take some effort. And my daughter actually told me this years ago. She says a lot of times we save our best clothes, like if we're going somewhere. Oh, I'm going to say that when I go to the high school reunion, and then you get there, you can't even fit it no more. Um, but she says you should get used to wearing your good clothes, even if you're not really going anywhere special, because it's not about showing somebody else that you have it. It's about you. It's about you feeling good and you, you know, just you deserve to wear good clothes and you know everywhere you go so um I, I've, I've always kind of been like that and my daughter she kind of got on me a little bit because when i was in california i dressed all the time don i mean you know i was, I was dressed whenever we go or whatever but then when i moved to texas it kind of was like a perfect storm it was a pandemic going on so people didn't really go anywhere much so i didn't dress up as much and my daughter always be like mom this ain't you what is going on this is not you and then, of course, you know, when um, uh, me and my uh, fiance at the time uh, broke up or whatever, I was like, man, you got to get that back. 
Cause that's how I, that, that made me feel good to get dressed and just, you know, go out or not even go out, but just maybe even to the store. So I've gotten back into that. So watch out world. Well, Demetra, isn't there an old saying you dress how you feel, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're dressed down looking like a bum, guess what? You're a bum. If you dress looking like a million dollars or as much as you can get, you feel like a million dollars. Isn't that a little truth to that? When you're, when you're dealing with the mental aspect of uh, uh, psychosis of people, it's an attitude, you know? It is because I remember um, after my uh, divorce, I, you know, I had gained some weight and just like this last time too. And I vowed never to do that again, to, you know, put on some weight. I'm, a, um, you know, value myself a little bit more. I got into being fit again, like I am now, and I got to a really good size and just really feeling confident. So one day I was at this event and I walked across the room and this older lady, she says, you come here. And I'm like, oh, snap, wow. come here. Who are you? And I said, I'm Demetra. No, I mean, like, who are you? She says, because I watched you walk to the restroom, and now you're coming back. She said, it's just something about you. The way you carry yourself. Are you here to pick up customers? No, I'm joking. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, thank you. But it made me aware that people are watching you. So it also made me realize we have to really carry ourselves in a way, because what if I would have just sloshed across the room and you know, came not really caring about that, about, oh, she needs some inspiration or something. But I served as an inspiration for the older woman. And she says, whatever you're doing, just keep it up. And so when I was kind of going through it uh, a year or so ago, she came to my mind. Don't lose that. Keep it up. So lately, like I said, when I go out, I do have people say, you look very nice. Oh, you know, this, that, and the other. And I don't, I never get a big head off of that kind of stuff at all because we ugly to somebody, right? I never get a big head off of that, but it does inspire me to know that other people are inspired. And that's really why, you know, I have a daughter as well, you know, that um, I want her to see the, you know, how to uh, properly as a woman take care of yourself. Um, and you never know. You you might a, a, a nice man might see you out there. I, I've had you know plenty of men approach me. One other time, I was at the store and I had a pineapple in my hand like that, um, because I was thinking about getting it. And he walks by and he says, "Oh, uh, what did he say? Uh, oh, it's good. It, it's good." <laughs> so he's talking about the pineapple at me, you know. <laughs> I said, oh, it is. He says, yes, it's good. <laughs> so, and this has kind of made me come off a little sadistic on my behalf, but I love it. I kind of like, I, I want to say get off like a sexual thing, not like that, but I, I love the whole little, I can, I can turn heads. I can, you know, I, I love that. And I think as women, we really, and not, not no cat and mouse playing games with men or nothing like that. I'm not saying like that, but just know that you can. Like have a man, you know, speak to you and, and notice you. Because my daughter's like, you should have saw how he was looking at you when you um, when you walked in the store. I said, he liked what he said. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you this, especially you old uh, women, even the younger women. The more clothes you have on, it stimulates the mind of a man to wonder what's going on under those clothes. When you're showing us everything, we're just like 304, 304, 304. And yeah, and I agree with you, Donovan. Um, I think it's important. Now, get, don't get me wrong. I do got a nice leg or two, okay? So when I was younger, I did like to show my legs, but now that I'm a little older, I wear shorts, but they're not too short, right? I, I, I never was one to wear Daisy Dukes or nothing like that. Um, but I, I, I find uh, more femininity, actually, in, in putting on more clothing. Now, of course, here in Houston, it's kind of hot. So you can't really put on too much clothing. But uh, you're right, men, I've, I've noticed that when I um, had on a dress or a little bit more clothing or something, um, men tend to like that. But I say at the end of the day, make sure that you are feminine. Um, one of my favorite songs, and you guys are going to probably laugh, I work out to this a lot, 
is Pumps in a Bump by MC Hammer. He says, I don't want no bra walking around with no tennis shoes on. We want Pumps in a Bump. <laughs> so when I'm working out, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Because I get it. It's like, as women, he, he as a man, he's saying, I don't want no bra walking around no tennis shoes. Like, wear the amusement park or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wear your tennis shoes. Because like I said, I got tennis shoes or whatever. But if we hanging out, now I want to see you with some heels on or whatever. I want to see you in a dress or looking feminine, looking soft. I get it. Because I don't even know when the, the, the age of um, women wearing sweatsuits. And listen, I have worn a sweatsuit or two, but I've had it fashioned to where it's feminine. I can wear heels with it. You know, done it but that's kind of become like the thing. I don't know. And I think it's cool every once in a while, but I think as women, and I know somebody probably gonna get mad, we should get back to wearing dresses and you know, that flow and that's cute and it's airy. Cause I, I know that men do like it. And for me, I do feel a lot more feminine wearing that type of clothing. Ladies, 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 women, men love feminine women, period. And this, this, this stupidness that women keep talking about, well, I'll be feminine, you know, like you can turn it on and off. No, either you're feminine or you're not. You're a man or you're not. It's just, it's that cut and dry. There is no turning on and turning off. You could be a woman, still feminine, and have to be hard because your kids got you pissed off and all that other stuff, but you can still be feminine doing that. You know, the, the, these these tropes that they make, like it's a switch, turn on switch. Uh uh. A real man's not going to put up with that. Either you're feminine or you're not. Men love femininity. We love it. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm one of those women, um, because, you know, being in my 50s, um, I had the pleasure of being around women or raised by women who were from the old school, right? They took the time to take care of themselves and, my mom, you know, you, you can tell her none. She was always going to dress and, you know, all of that. She was and my grandmothers, both of them. Um, but I'm also one. I, I, I love old Hollywood movies. I um, sometimes in my downtime, I haven't done it in a while. I like to go on YouTube and watch uh, beauty uh, practices of the 30s, 40s and 50s uh, and see what those women did. Joan Crawford. Y yes. Face all face. of that. Yes. <laughs> her but ice cube. Right. Yeah, I ain't gonna take it that far. That's a lot. Uh, but if you notice too, back then those women they didn't have on a lot of makeup all over their face. They had some powder, you know, and a, a, a red lip or pink lip or something, uh, a light eye makeup or whatever, and a little, as they would say back in the day, some rouge. And you know, they kept it pushing, and they always talked about keeping your nails at a decent length. I, I never have this super like because for one. And this is just me because I know people get mad and they love their nails. I'm talking about me, Demetra K. I don't like long nails. And I think that long nails that are too long, like even my nails are getting long. I need to cut them. Um, th they're unsanitary. They're unsanitary. And um, I just think a, a, a nice, short, manicured nail is it's, it's sexy to me it, as a woman. It's more sexier than a lot of these long nails that you see nowadays. And no judgment to anybody. The Shanae nails. Oh, yeah. The Shanae yeah, nails. Yeah. A, a nice. I see. I'm one of those people. I like classic. I like classic looks. That's just me. Because to me, when you look classic, you look clean. That's me. Well, I, I wouldn't even say it's just classic. It's just classy. I mean, when you carry yourself a certain way. So again, we, we talked about people, women that know their worth. If you think you are worth a million dollars, could you please look like it? Could you please look like it? And you know the other I mean? thing too is when you look at a lot of um, millionaire and billionaire wives, they rarely have all that going on. They'll have, you know, a fresh face, maybe some, you know, maybe lipstick or something like that. But they don't have all of the, uh, like sometimes when I, uh, I'm bored, I'll watch people do makeup and I'm like, is your face under there anymore? You know, it's like, what are Why you Why do you doing? think guys are, are panicking now when we meet women? Like, is that you? <laughs> I mean, I get it. I mean, I really do. And it's not the fire on women. If you wear makeup, that's on you. I, you know. I wear lipstick and I, um, you know, wear uh, mascara. I don't do the falsies or 
I, I'm not just into a lot of false stuff. That's just me. Um, but you look at their wives, their wives are they're classic and they're clean. You know, they they and to me, it's all about skin care. If you take care of your skin, I don't I don't have any foundation or nothing like that on my, you know, you take care of your uh your skin, then you won't need to wear a lot of makeup. That I, I because if you look at a lot of women who well, and men, because it's men out there wearing makeup too, when they take the makeup off, it's like. Have you seen what Cardi B looks like when she's not all done up? I'm not saying she's an ugly woman because I don't believe people are ugly in general, but she isn't as attractive. And that's the whole point of makeup, right? It's to enhance your beauty that you already have. But I, I saw a video where this woman, she had really bad skin stuff, whatever it was, and she had like a mask. It's like a, a prosthetic. And she would pull the mask off, kind of. It wasn't like all in her face, but it was like, it was really a thin type thing. And it covered the scarring. And I, I get it for wherever she has to do it. But when she uncovered who she really was, it was like, whoa, you know, you, you know, you would be like, whoa, you know, not, not that she wasn't attractive. because Everybody's attracted to somebody. But a lot of women, sometimes you guys are putting on makeup to where, and this is my opinion, I don't know if you're a drag queen or if you're a woman. That's how much is going on. Yeah. And like I said, I mean, some people, they just feel like they need to do it. And again, I'm not ever going to tell a woman um, <clears throat> what she should and should not wear. I can only really just speak for myself. Um, I just know uh, skin care is where you're going to get the, uh, the best, you know, look and then enhance it. Like you said, it should be makeup. It should be an enhancement. It shouldn't be a replacement like <laughs> today on myself. Today on somebody you're like heckling me, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, um, uh, Jekyll and Hyde, you know, you're two different people, uh, but you should still be able to tell that. Like, if y'all ever meet me uh, in person, which a lot of people have, you're gonna know it's me, you're not gonna see a different person, uh, in public that you see on here because you, you just you just gonna you recognize me, right? I'm not doing anything differently on the street that I'm doing here, I'm not sitting on here with a bunch of makeup on and you know fooling you guys uh and when i'm on the street you're gonna be like oh okay that's the me true i thought yeah that's me because i have people do that to me so um yeah, with the bodyguards all around her and stuff no demetra was pretty much out there just being herself and whatever i mean a lot of guys be coming for her but you know <laughs> I, and you know what though um and i'm gonna say this and i know we're gonna get out of here so i can actually upload this um i'm gonna say this as women, I know, you know, we do have guys approaching us and stuff. And this is, I'm, I'm speaking about the guys that approach us in the right way. And I haven't had really too many guys in the last, I would say, 30 years approach me negatively. Um, but when they do approach us, be nice. Hello, how you doing? They say, oh, you look nice today. Thank you so much. You know, and instead of, Why are you talking to me? You know, it's not going to kill you to say thank you so much. I appreciate that. Because you never know how much confidence. And I'm not saying you should do this to, to strengthen his confidence. You have no loyalty to a stranger. But you don't know what it took for that man to even get up the nerve to say, you look very nice today. Or it looks good to me. <laughs> now, what if that man would have said that? What you mean, sucker? What look good to you? Oh, you better be talking about this pineapple. <laughs> you might, you know, I might have freaked them out. But I'm, my daughter tell you, she says that I flirt. I'm not flirting. I'm just, it's tongue in cheek. It's like, oh, for real? Oh, it does? You know, like that. Like, so I don't have a problem with, uh, you know, having a back and forth, a friendly banter or whatever with, you know, men. Um, because as a woman, to concede your point a little bit, Donovan, we do like that. I like it. I like when a man notices that I, you know, did dress up or I have something that smells good on that day. I like that, you know, and it, and it makes me feel good. So I know it doesn't hurt me to say, and it's weird because I've actually had some men say, thank you for, you know, responding back or being nice. And I'm like, 
Is that a thing, really, to wear this? It is. I mean, you don't even want to give women compliments because they want to bite your head off, you know, or they read into it too much. Like, how dare you? You know, I got a man. I didn't ask you. I just said you look nice. That's that's it, you know? Yeah. So I, that to me, that's weird that 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 goes on. It's like, you ain't got to bite a man's head off. Now, if he's doing too much, you might want to just say, okay, that's enough. <laughs> Whatever, boy. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You really know how I make a girl feel good. You know, whatever the case is, and he's gonna go on like, yeah, she spoke to me. <laughs> you got a man. You know, we we didn't ask you all that. We just said oh. good morning. <laughs> yeah, you know, you don't know, even have to go there. You know, not he says, you single? Yeah, no, not single. Or, you know, married or got a, a fiance or boyfriend or whatever. But you know what? You see, because I'm, I'm just good. I'm at that. You had that problem. See the banter, and you see the intelligence when you banter yeah. with people. Uh, yeah, but you know, but I'm. If somebody was to ask me that, and I was in a situation, I would say, um, "Oh yeah, you know, I, I have a boyfriend." Um, but thank you so much for asking. But you know what? You go ahead and have a great day. Oh, okay, you end it. Then it, it's just that simple. No, I got a boyfriend, but. Put your number on my phone. I'll put you under. Uh, <laughs> but I don't have a sugar daddy. <laughs> that I'm not giving y'all that advice. But anyway, we're going to get out of here. We're going to see you on the live show. I think I have some interesting to talk about. I don't know. Donna, if you want to talk about politics or you want to talk about something else. Yeah, just something. We'll, we'll pick something else to, to talk okay, about. But so I have some things but, but I, before I we go, I want to remind everybody, don't forget to check out Demetra K on the African Diaspora News channel. She puts up other videos other than what you guys see here. So if you have not become a member, subscribe, do that, uh, contribute to the channel. Also, don't forget to check out the Philip Scott show. Philip Scott throws out his uh, nightly podcast and he's talking about different subjects, what's going on in our politics here in the United States, as well as I'm going to give you guys a heads up. Pay attention to what's going on in South Africa. Matter of fact, Demetra, one of our subscribers and one of our uh, friends just took off for South Africa. I think it's the second time now going down there. Uh, uh, so he's down in South Africa. South Africa is uh, for the very first time, they say in the elections this year in South Africa, the ANC will lose the majority because the uh, the state is failing. And what I mean failing is that they are not being uh, responsive to the very people that elect them into office. Because again, apartheid has been gone for about 30 something years now and the people are in a worse situation than they were before apartheid so that's something to look at and last but not least how about those cowboys you keep hope alive okay keep hope alive anything is possible so anyway we love and appreciate all you guys um we'll see you all at about 5 30 ish central time uh, so in the meantime, you guys be blessed. Peace.